Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. I'm Amy, the Sunflower Spirit. My channel is about spirituality, the paranormal, tarot readings, religion, the law of attraction, those types of things. So feel free to have a look around, explore my channel a bit further. Today's video is going to be about Jonathan Black books, but I want to speak specifically about his views on the Antichrist. So I just first of all want to say that the views expressed in this video are not my own views. I don't necessarily believe these things that I'm going to be discussing. I just really find Jonathan's Black's, Jonathan Black's work very interesting. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed his two books that I've read. I have read The Sacred History and I've also read The Secret History of the World. So I just recently finished The Secret History of the World and I'm just going to briefly explain to you what he says about the Antichrist. So in his mentions of the Antichrist, well, his entire section on the Antichrist is in the postscript of the actual book. So there's like a whole chapter on the subject. I'm going to be skipping through the text and just reading bits and pieces here and there because he refers to other people's views on the Antichrist as well. So I want to just quickly mention that although it says Jonathan Black on these books, he is actually named Mark Booth. So Jonathan Black is the pseudonym, his pseudonym. All right, so let's first of all see what he says about when the Antichrist will incarnate as such. I just need to find the proper text that I'm looking for, because like I said, he speaks about the Antichrist from his own perspective and from the perspective of other writers. <clears throat> All right, let me start off right here. It says here, and this is page 557. All right. It says, in the Bible, the Antichrist is in fact only mentioned by name in the epistles of John. It says, John 2 verse 18, And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. And then further on it says, And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, and is now already in the world. And this is again his words, not mine. Jonathan Black's words. So on the say-so of John, the letter writer we can say, that the Antichrist will be anti-Christian and in that he will deny that Jesus is the Christ or Messiah. We can say too, though he may at times pretend otherwise, being a liar, he will be an, an atheist in the sense of denying both Jesus and God. Because the prefix anti carries with it a layer of meaning instead of, as well as against, we can say that it will appear in some ways Christ-like. Alright, so this is the view of Jonathan Black, that this person will also perform miracles similar to the way that Jesus Christ performed miracles. Alright, I'm just skipping here a few pieces. It says here that Daniel prophesies a prince who is to come. A king of fierce countenance and a little horn who has eyes and a mouth which speaks pompous words, whose appearance is greater than his fellows. He wages war against the saints 
and has the upper hand for a time and times and half a time. That sounds confusing. Okay, then it speaks about the book of Revelation, referring to the Antichrist. Okay, I just want to skip these few pages. Here it says, more than just denying God and appearing Christ-like. In Thessalonians, the Antichrist seeks to put himself in the place of God, to preempt the second coming by deceiving people with miracles that are in some way bogus. Daniel also says that the Antichrist will try to stop sacrifices and other forms of worship of God. The Antichrist will appear in troubled times, will be plausibly Christ-like. The career of the Antichrist is tied up very closely with the mission of the Christ. It is a sort of perverse hijacking of it. And here's a paradox, Jonathan Black says, because although the Antichrist brings a principle of lawlessness, he is evidently in some way ordained. I'm looking for a very specific place, a very specific piece. All right, page 564 says, it is significant that in the course of the short extract quoted above, which we didn't look at, that the Antichrist will be a spiritualist. All right, it speaks about the psychic Rudolf Steiner, who mentioned criteria for identifying the Antichrist. And here it says, here are the criteria Steiner gives for recognizing the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be born in the West, will make himself known in the middle of shattering events, a war, and present himself as a benefactor to mankind. Steiner says he will be a writer, but that is not to say that writing will be his only work. He will be able to perform miracles, but will then show himself able to explain these miracles in scientific and mechanical terms. He will do this with the aim of convincing the world that no spiritual forces, no mysterious spiritual intelligences independent of matter are necessary to explain the claims of religion. He will very quickly become successful. He will found schools teaching people how to perform these scientific miracles. Steiner calls them magic arts. And then these miracles will enable people to gain material benefits much more easily than if they had to work for them in the normal way. That sounds really interesting. Steiner is also reported as having said that the Antichrist's name might be John William Smith. Jonathan Black does say here, John, Jonathan, that's, there's no correlation there. <laughs> it is not clear whether Steiner meant to indicate merely that the name would be ordinary or also that it would be an Anglo-Saxon name. So not to take it too literally, he could have just meant that it is, it would be a very common name. The Antichrist would have a very common name. I mean, John William Smith is so common and so plain. So, in essence, that is what Jonathan Black is trying to say, that the Antichrist's mission is to try to persuade people to accept a view of the world as an entirely mechanical place. So when I read this book, I understood it as that the Antichrist will try to explain away religion, will try to explain spirituality as being something more scientific. The Antichrist will come and eradicate spirituality 
by telling people that everything can be explained by science and technology. That is how I understood it to be. And along with the Antichrist, he will bring the spirit of materialism. So everyone will concentrate more on money, on things that are tactile, things that are material. Instead of looking at the spiritual things, the things that, in my opinion, matter more. Because ultimately, one day when we die, we, we can't take any of our material belongings with us. We only have this body, and this body can't even go with us when we die. So that is in short what Jonathan Black has to say on the matter. And I just felt like I should share it with you guys because I found it very interesting when I read it. And although we can't say whether it's true or not, it is just another thing to ponder and to question and wonder about. Um, obviously, you could say it needs further investigation. But how can you actually investigate this? Because it's very objective. You can't really say that it's true or that it's not true. You can't say whether the Antichrist, if he or she even exists, has already incarnated. We don't know. Thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, even if it was a bit um, unusual, even for me. I hope you guys are staying well and I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Chat soon. Bye for now.